the belt. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Captain America said, you gotta be like me or you're gonna wind up Hey guys, we are back. Yeah, folks, we are back. Welcome again to another show of our East Meets West. We got a lot of interesting things to talk about here, though. So, without further ado, let's bring in Flamehawk. Uh, we have many different things that are worth mentioning, but, however, I'm going to go off of Guardians of the Galaxy. Mr. Alright, 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 Matthew McConaughey himself, could have been the main villain, which no one really knows for sure, but I am willing to bet it was Magnus, a.k.a. Adam Warlock. Though James Gunn has came under some scrutiny saying he's not gonna be putting him in the movie even though we have different signs like the cocoon in the collector's collection saying that he will be in the MCU at one point or another. I'm kind of happy because I'm not really sure how he could pull off such a main character in the Guardians of the Galaxy and that movie kind of needs to live up to the hype with their different ways of being different in the MCU or not and I'm not sure if Matthew McConaughey could uh, really bring the level of differentness as the first movie definitely changed the tone. We also might be seeing Mantis in the Guardians of the Galaxy. That might definitely be interesting because if the Mantis is back, that would add a different dynamic to the team because her different powers and whatever, if you want to look up her powers, go online and search them up. They're pretty decent. I think they'd be worth adding to the team. I'm kind of looking for Moon Dragon also to be added just because the thing, uh, the, um, Drax the Destroyer, that being his daughter, sorry for the spoiler if that can technically be called a spoiler, but other than that, I think this movie is on track to be pretty decent. In um, other news is here, let us talk about how new Power Ranger has been revealed. Yes, we finally have the uh, cast for the Yellow Ranger. Her name is Becky Gomez, or Becky G, or Rebecca Marie Gomez, however you seem to know her as. She'll be playing the Yellow Ranger in the upcoming new Power Rangers film. She is a songwriter, a rapper, and an actress. So, for those of you who have watched Empire, she plays uh, Valentina on Empire. So, And a lot of people have watched Empire. I have seen a few episodes myself. It's a pretty good show, especially the music. But, back on track here, we seem to have... All five cast members of the uh, Power Rangers, we have Naomi Scott as the Pink Ranger, Ludi Lin as the Black Ranger, Dark Montgomery as the Red Ranger, and RJ Siler as the Blue Ranger. And last but not least, we have Becky Gomez as the Yellow Ranger. So it seems we have all five cast members for the uh, complete set of the Power Rangers here. So very interesting there. Can't wait to see how all this is going to come together in the uh, upcoming film, which is slated for January, which is slated for January 2017. So, like I said, I can't wait for this film. I really hope they do the film justice here because, I mean, who doesn't love Power Rangers? I mean, come on. It's like solidified in everybody's childhood here. But yeah, that's it on the Power Rangers sides. 
Back to Flamehawk. That's definitely interesting. I definitely think that movie might actually be somewhat decent if they can do it in the right way. What do you think? Well, I mean, personally, a lot of people are thinking that there might be more cast members because you know how the Power Rangers usually have the one mem like the one extra member to add on. Yeah, for uh, cannon fodder. Yeah, so, I mean, potentially there could be another Green Ranger or White... Wait, what do you mean cannon fodder? <laughs> what? There usually is one that kind of somehow by the end of the series kind of finds himself kind of gone i uh, uh, i guess but i mean i mean personally that might if this movie goes well there might be a sequel where that does happen because is so far this movie seems to be an origin story so if it's an origin story we shouldn't really be seeing a death like that so soon so We'd probably see more of what you're saying in an upcoming sequel where we might get the new, another Power Ranger join the team. Hashtag plot twist. Yeah, hashtag plot twist. I'm um, very would be interesting to see how um, the MMA fighter Jason, the guy who played Tommy in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I'm interested to see how, what cameo he would be playing when the movie finally hits the scene. I'm really am interested in this film. Really hope it does well. I'm going to jump back to the D I'm going to jump back and go to the DC side of things. Uh spoilers by the way. It might be spoilers. Viola Davis and David Ayer might have just said who the villain is. Many thought it was Enchantress, many thought it was the Joker, but it seems the real villain is Amanda Walker. Yes, that's right, the person who brought them all together. It's um, might man, be You mean Amanda Waller? Yeah, Waller. So, the one that brought them all together is going to be the main villain, so... Would this be meaning... Wait, that doesn't make any sense, though. How would that work? Would this mean that they're trying to break free from her grip? Or is she really up to no good, would it? Let me just say the interview that Davis said about the character. She's relentless in her villainy. When you look at her, there's nothing that seems dangerous her only power is the intelligence and her complete lack of guilt i read a great book called confessions of sociopath which was frightening but very helpful i'm not sure how this fits into everything but people have taken it as that she is the main villain i don't know how to go about that to be truthfully honest because in one hand it seems like a decent story because it's not expected However, it just seems like a little bit out of the blue, which might not be terrible, but has a possibility of heading that way. What do you think? Uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not sure. I'm still iffy on whether Amanda Waller really is the villain in this. I'm still a bit, I mean, there could potentially, I mean, I may have to do a bit, we may have to do a bit of research here, but there's got to be, there has to be another villain or Another character that could fit that, that could fit those prerequisites that were set. I mean, it can't just be Amanda Waller. Like, you get what I'm, I understand what I'm saying, right? I mean, yeah, because she's usually, she's not all the action part of it. She's the kind of managing, bookkeeping kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely interesting. It would have been definitely more interesting if they could have got Oprah as they wanted to for the character. Yeah, that I would actually have loved to see there. Her, her as the main villain? That would be that would be interesting. And her playing Amanda Waller, I could really see her playing that, you know, strong female lead. I could really see that. Well, also onto a new movie. We have information about a new Batman solo movie. And it seems that the main villain might be Red Hood. Wait, 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 wait. So we're already getting a Batman solo film here? Yes, we are getting that. Isn't it a bit too soon since Batman v Superman hasn't officially hit this hit the theaters yet? There's not exactly a direct timetable on this film. However, we just got word on what might happen. It might not happen, but we know Ben Affleck is going to be co-writing the script with Jeff Johns, who's a comic book writer, and recently news have been out that red hood might be actually in the film as a villain well yeah red hood is a villain but i don't really i don't really think i could see red hood as the main villain because while he yes his method is a bit unscrupulous he's always like he's either as held batman on occasion or just mainly tried to just mess around batman or anything but usually he tries to clean up gotham in a much more violent sense so i don't really think i could see red hood as the main villain maybe like one of the main characters that stir things around but i don't know if i can see him as the main villain what do you think here 
Yeah, what you said is correct. However, it would be an interesting twist, though, because who would be expecting that as the main villain? I mean, this is already established in the DCU as him as a older version of Batman. Well, that is true, but, um... I mean, it's just... I, I mean, I, whenever I think of this, I'll keep going back to the animated film called, um... I think it was Batman Under the Hood, I believe it was called, the animated version. And while, yes, Red Hood was kind of the air quote-unquote main villain as if he was trying to stir things up we it was mainly joker and black mass that was kind of like running the things it was kind of like just the red hood is just going there trying to capitalize on the chaos so maybe if in that sense then yeah i could definitely see the red hood being the main villain but if they mean for like the traditional sense where he's um sending out crime lords or whatnot like i just don't see it i just don't see that after the nolan films you want to break off and go your separate way and not use the same characters, in a sense. That is definitely true. I agree with that. Because, let's face it, I'm sorry, but Jared Leto, I'm not sure if you can pull off the Joker that... As nature intended. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're not a Nicholson or you're not Ledger. Uh, yes, Ledger. You are, you're, n you're definitely not a Ledger. I, I, I apologize, but it's just the truth. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's just the truth. I mean... They could go Penguin in the new films, which I'm not sure if anyone could actually beat Danny DeVito in that role. Yeah, that's 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 actually a good question. That's actually a good uh, point there. They might want to shake things up and go with Mr. Bloom, who was a new character released this summer in the comics. But I'm not sure if going to be well known enough to be brought into the mix so soon. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different villains that they could use. It's just that whether or not they're film-worthy. Like, there's Man-Bat, Poison that'd, Ivy. That would be interesting. Man-Bat would definitely that be interesting. That would be interesting. Especially with Halloween coming up, that that would be interesting. Especially if they gave out trailers. I, I would want, I'd pay to see that. Hmm. Like, Man-Bat versus Batman live that, action. That would be good. That would be an interesting thing. And then we also have other villains such as, like, Poison Ivy... And maybe we can do, like, a Harley Quinn type of spinoff, but I don't see that one working out very well, at least not without the Joker. Yeah, I'm not sure as as her as the main villain. Well, we have Hugo Strange also. Yes, that. Hugo Strange. Now that's somebody we need. Hugo, that's somebody we need. Hugo Strange is going to be coming to Gotham, the TV series. Oh, now that I have got to see. Things have just got interesting, folks. Definitely. And with the... Recent editions of the mayor elections and what's going on around that in the series. I'm not going to spoil anything, but let me just say, things are heating up and adding Hugo Strange to the mix. What can we expect? I'm not sure, but Hugo Strange can definitely add the villain that many folks are wanting in Gotham. Definitely. Psychological warfare and all. But, uh... Speaking of heroes, let us go straight to the My Hero Academia, or Boku no Hero Academia. The TV adaptation has indeed been confirmed, folks. Recently on Twitter, around Twitter in Tuesday, it was accidentally leaked on Twitter by the official, I think, the official Twitter account for Boku no Hero. It accidentally had revealed it ahead of time that the anime adaptation is indeed a go and it will be happening. So I had made sure to repost that on our Twitter with pictures and everything to show evidence of this. And even as the um, the chapter this week has come out all saying that the TV adaptation, ha TV anime is definitely going to be up there. So I for one am interested to see how they're going to do this. I mean, the signs were all around us with the Toho advertising trying to take out the um, donate the uh, website domain name. Uh, it, the, the signs were all around us. Like, what what else could have been? And especially with the spinoff manga, there's also has been like a little snippets have been revealed within the Shonen Jump. I have not seen it as of yet, though. Gonna probably look into that. Very curious to see how that's gonna work. Now, there are many questions as to what's really gonna happen here. Is like who's gonna take the, who's gonna take you know Boku no Hero? Like who's gonna take the anime? And um, a lot. Of, I I really am curious. I mean, nobody wants Toei. Nobody wants Toei to touch it. I mean, look at One Piece. Look at Dragon Ball Super. Need I say more? Do we really want Toei to touch Boku no Hero? No, we don't. We really don't. But it begs the question: Who could take it? I mean, definitely not Studio Period, because they'll shove that thing with filler up 
up the behind. Let's 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 keep it clean. It's just because I mean, in, just to deviate a little bit, the Naruto Shippuden anime only had I believe five to eight canon episodes this year. The rest were filler. And Studio Perry out with the Tokyo Ghoul thing, we already like go back to rent, go back to our Rant City episode, and you'll know all my thoughts on that. So Studio Periot and Toei Animation, no, no, just no. And to be honest, while I would love Madhouse to take it, Madhouse already had their hands filled with One Punch Man, which beautiful as always. So it just really begs the question: Who is really up to the task to take My Hero Academia and give it the justice it really deserves here? I mean, there's so many things we can go with here, and too bad Manga Globe has been shut down rest in peace so i mean begs the question who's going to take this welcome to hero academia i for one i'm looking forward to it it's a good series if you haven't read it i suggest you go out there and re read it it's uh like i said it's it's very interesting you'll love it it has superheroes it has you know the it's and it's not just about superpowers and superheroes and all that stuff it also has to do with ideology on you know crime heroes villains all of that stuff it has everything a lot of people out there would ask for and the main character izuku midoriya he breaks the norm for typical shonen characters like for one he's not stupid like typical luffy goku naruto they're strong but not very smart in this one, we have a very intelligent main character, and his power is for him to become very strong. So, most of the beauty of it is, not everything is just solved with brute force with the character. Most of the instances that he's involved in, he manages to solve them with his mind. With, like, using his intelligence. So, like I said, it's a very lovely, it's a very lovely series. If you're tired of, like, normal shonen series, I suggest you give this one a try, because it breaks the norm in so many levels. So, um, enough on that tangent. And once again, they're still trying to say that on November 2nd, there's still going to be a special announcement. So, since they already revealed that there's going to be a TV anime, does this mean, like, does this mean the special announcement is something else? Or did they just cancel that? I mean, only time will tell once November 2nd, which is actually fastly approaching. So, uh, back to Flamehawk. I definitely am a fan of Boku no Hero Academia. And I'm not sure how they're going to be doing with the restructuring to a new company and whatever, but we definitely wish them the best. Yes, we definitely do. We might be seeing some Hulk in Thor Ragnarok. Hulk in... Th wait, Hulk in Thor Ragnarok? That's what I'm coming to believe, because in a new interview, they said, I don't really know that much about it. But I think it's going to be a buddy picture with Thor and Bruce Banner. I think they'll probably fight. There's no doubt everyone wants us to fight at one point. I don't really know why th he's in Thor Ragnarok. Because it should be kind of like a Thor movie himself. But more than that, it wouldn't really make sense. Because didn't in the end of Age of Ultron, Hulk just went up and MIA. Yeah, he just went up and left. Yeah, and didn't they kind of say there was not going to be any more Hulk movies for a while? Like, what are they What are they doing here? What are they thinking? My theory is we could just be, be trolled right here, because I don't see it. I mean, like, I don't see it making canical sense, in my opinion, here. I mean, I, I know people want a new Hulk movie, but that is pretty illogical because, you know, CGI being used, like, every second. Yeah. Which... Brings up the price, and Hulk isn't exactly that much of a seller, unfortunately, at the box office. Yeah, that is true. I mean, the f while the story can be deep, the formula for it is very simple. Some dude got into a radioactive accident to the point where every time he gets mad, his second personality comes and just wrecks stuff. Hulk's mess. Exactly. I mean, what what can you really, what can, like, how many different times can you really change up the formula? It will be the same. And after seeing how Fox did the thing, yeah. which we aren't even going to go no, into at let's, depth. let's not. We see that CGI fully charactered people in the movies are might not be exactly the best way to go about it. I'm not saying we need Lou Ferrigno kind of 1980s and 70s looking effects, but that would definitely make it more manageable on the Marvel side. 
to bring it back to to bring back the Hulk in th- theaters. Uh, well, this I'm not sure what to make of this. I mean, at least on the bright side, we get to see a Thor versus Hulk, possibly. No comment. <laughs> No comment, no comment here either. Back to you, gentleman snark. Yes, yes, I'm the gentleman snark. But um, in other news here, Bandai Namco Entertainment Europe has streamed the English teaser trailer for the One Piece Burning Blood. This teaser was supposed to showcase the three v the three on three gameplay. So. Basically, you could fight. There's going to be a three versus three melee combat system in the game. By the way, for those of you who wish to go see the trailer, feel free to check out our Twitter page. That's where uh, we have recently just posted by the time of this. So, back to the trailer. It's going to be. It showcases Luffy, Trafalgar Law, uh, Doflamingo, Ace, Sab- Sabo, Inaru, Crocodile, and Bartolomeo. Very interesting to see that Bartolomeo is in this fighting game. I mean, you'd think he's more of a joke character, but based on the trailer, he's actually willing to do some damage to anyone except Luffy, apparently. So, it's a very interesting thing. It seems as if it's going to be following, like, one of the simple, like, fighting game mechanics where you're when one of your characters are in mid-combo, you're able to switch them out and immediately get your other characters in to come either to continue the string of combos. So it seems to be following, I believe, something like a Street Fighter type of setting and also a Marvel vs. Capcom type of setting. So yeah, it seems we can be following that type of gameplay um, mechanic. So it looked very interesting too there. A lot of the combos, especially Doflamingo's, like his gameplay setting and attacks were very... um irregular in terms of like his movement i mean it's not bad whatsoever i'm just saying it's very irregular for his um character so it was very interesting to see and especially we have law and his opi opi no mi fruit really going into work so a lot of sword slashes injections and whatnot we didn't get to see counter shock which i thought was a missed opportunity hope hopefully we'll be able to see it so yeah this seems to be like a very good uh action and fighting game it's probably going to be rivaling against the uh new uh the new naruto ultimate ninja 4 i believe game so yeah one piece burning blood seems is going to be having a lot of its work cut out for it so back to uh flamehawk well we can see from a new trailer that lucifer a new dc series going to be on fox might actually be decent and stands more of a chance than other series that might not have been great on on tv i'm not looking at constantine but i'm uh looking at you (laughs) sorry well basically if you don't know lucifer not really sure how to bring you up on him i guess the quickest way for you to look him up is basically go online do a little bit of research yourself and then come back to our twitter page at meets west to check out the new trailer so time to be time to uh, get back into the anime side of things persona 3 the fourth movie has finally unveiled its preview this promotional video the trailer for the fourth film which is called winter of rebirth and this will be the fourth and final film of the persona 3 installment so for those of you who have played the game you know how this will end none of us is gonna like it but it's gonna happen we know how this is gonna end it's gonna happen the question is, I wonder how they're going to manage to pull it off. That's my question. And once again, if you want to go see the trailer, feel free to go check out our Twitter page. We have all the tw- we have all the uh, trailers and such. So, I'm not sure this movie, it's going to, we already know, the, based on how the other few movies have ended, this movie is going to be a bit of a tearjerker, especially for those who are diehard Persona 3 films, because, spoilers, the main character, Makoto, he's going to die in the end or sacrifice himself you know messiah complex and whatnot it's gonna happen we know it's gonna happen but a lot of people preferably me might be hoping for some sort of twist at the end because i mean i believe for those of you who have played the games especially in persona 4 arena series not sure if anyone still counts that they're still trying to find a way to free him from that prison so i'm not sure whether the fourth movie would it'll it, it won't i don't think it will end entirely bad it'll have a bit of a lukewarm ending where it won't be entirely depressing it'll be a bit of a silver lining but 
I wonder if they can't. I wonder if their end there'll be any Easter eggs depending depicting like anything else of a new Persona series. Maybe an Easter egg of the Persona Four series, or maybe it'll be an Easter egg of the Persona Five series, as they have as it has been stated that there will be an anime adaptation for the Persona Five series. I believe in it was stated in either New York Comic Con or in the Tokyo Game Show. That was obviously in Tokyo. So anything could happen anything could happen here it's very interesting i really want to see what they're planning on doing with this uh personally they could also they could also try maybe doing a spin-off maybe they could be a potential fifth film air quotes which is probably going to show a movie version of the fes for those of you who have played the uh you know persona 3 the fes what happens after the uh, main character went you know bye bye so a lot of things they could do here. I don't think they'll close the book on the Persona 3 series with this fourth film just yet. I don't think they'll do it just yet. I think they might go for another animated film or another animated OVA of the FES. And preferably they might show a bit of a cameo towards Persona 4. But I believe it might be more to Persona 5 because Persona 4, they already kind of, they kind of rang Persona 4 to the ground so to speak they kind of need something else here and persona 5 is still ready and waiting for their like animated limelight here so that's going to be like persona 3 that's going to be the fourth movie winter of rebirth so enough about that so enough about the persona 3 series there let's also talk about the boku no hero chapter for uh, this week i believe it was chapter 65 so basically, for those of you who have re- who else you have read chapter sixty four and also listened to our um, the podcast Gentleman's Collection, where I also went on the spiel for that chapter, how basically Aizawa or Eraserhead was taken down by Todoroki's team. So in this chapter, we're seeing the continuation of the struggle between Bakugo, Izuku, ver- and Izuku versus All Might. And dang, they it. It was, their their backs were literally against the wall in this fight here. It was a final confrontation here. So, oh yeah, by the way, spoilers for those of you who have not read the uh, chapter. And for those of you who haven't, go read the chapter. Like, what are you doing? So, back, back to what I was saying. Basically, final confrontation here. As we had seen in previous chapters, I believe it was in chapter 63, where Izuku had used um, Bakugo's gauntlet to launch that explosion to send All Might back. When All Might manages to catch up to them while they're running away, Bakugo tries to do the same thing immediately, but it, All Might was not having it. All Might was not having it. He instantly broke the gauntlet immediately. So, they really had their work cut out for them. They got pwned left and right, and I believe we saw maybe a little bit of growth with uh, Bakugo's character because he slowly started to realize maybe in his own way that when Izuku had told him to run he had a point that Izuku actually had a point that Izuku just wasn't trying to be a coward that maybe that running was probably the best option because he is slowly starting to realize the huge gap between him and All Might and how he probably has a lot to learn maybe he didn't think of it in those exact words but you could tell that He's actually developing some type of growth or maybe the fear of God as he's starting to see that All Might is the, he is the symbol of peace. And he's, re- and he's now starting to understand that why he is the number one hero as he's getting wrecked. So basically, when, so basically, Izuku finally manages to break free from All Might's grip while, you know, Bakugo's just chilling on the floor. They go for one latch dish, ditch effort, and Bakugo basically tries to fling Izuku to the exit. And we see Bakugo trying one more time to fend off against All Might, and it just is not. It's just not working. Like, All Might's just not having it. All Might's just taking all those explosions and just saying, that's cute. It's just not working out. And once again, we see another character we see another reason why izuku is izuku as like why all might chose izuku for this power because just when once again we have all my about to lay the coup de gras on bakugo we see like izuku was about to go for the exit but he immediately just turns back and clocks all Might right in the face and manages to save bakugo at the same time so once again we have to see why izuku is izuku and why all might has chosen him like 
the bravery, the smile, the like wanting to defy all odds and always trying to save somebody at all costs. So basically when Stain said that there was worth in keeping Izuku alive and his belief in heroes, this this right here per further solidifies it. So that was essentially the chapter, last dish effort. They did manage to pass the exam by escaping All Might through the skin of their teeth. Personally, I kind of think that All Might kind of still held back because after that punch, it didn't seem like that punch really grazed them. I felt as if maybe if he really wanted to, he could have chased after them. So I can't really give that victory towards them entirely. But yeah, they really did manage to pull out that victory by like the skin of their teeth. It was a very interesting chapter. So yeah, I give this chapter like probably like a 9 out of 10 maybe not maybe a 10 out of 10 very good character development on both characters side but enough about that let's go back to flamehawk well as we all know monday was the release of supergirl i think everyone was kind of disappointed i'm sorry but a lot of people i think might have been expecting something grandiose and they were ex they kind of got a knockdown version of smallville uh, that's at least my take on it. I mean, there were some points on it that were definitely worthy of watching. However, there were some that just you couldn't look past, and that made the series kind of a grin and moan every 10 seconds, because you'll get something that's nice, and then you'll get something that's just not great. I'm expecting the series to get better as it goes on. However, it had a little bit of rocky start starting out, so... I definitely think that the female lead can prove herself in the television side of the superhero universe because she's different. There are many things about her that are different. However, some of the things that make her different are the similarities to Superman and kind of being a Smallville-esque kind of show. But that's enough about her. Now let's move on to Pacific Rim 2. Yeah, I know, we've heard this, we've done everything we could about it. There's just one more thing. The script and budget for Pacific Rim 2 has been submitted by Guillermo del Toro. So, where will we see this go? Will we actually see this go out and become a movie? I'm not sure. Even Guillermo del Toro said the Pacific Rim 2 budget and script went in. No answer yet, if anything happens. I will post, if nothing happens, I will just keep rambling. So, even the person who was working on it has no idea. He just had to complete his side of the thing so he would get his side of the script going so he would get the money. However, there are no positive signs on the movie actually happening besides some rumors. But we'll see going forward. If we can actually expect a Pacific Rim 2 or not, but my honest opinion is no. It's enough about that. Really enough about that. I mean, we've been talking about that for way too long this time. You know, back to Film and Shark again. Let's, uh, as we're gonna wrap up on my end with the One Piece chapter review. Chapter 805, where we finally get to see... We finally get more exposition on the mink race that happens to be inhabiting Zo. So, we continue from last chapter where we see how Zoro, once again, was trying to clash with the, I guess, bunny mink, as that's practically what she is. Basically, it turns out that clash was not actually hockey. It was like some type of electricity that ability that she seems to have. And if we notice with her claws, it's actually some type of... Um, like, it doesn't seem to be like her real hand, like she put on some type of gloves or whatnot. But more to the chapter itself. Basically, it seems as if we don't really have the typical misunderstanding where, oh, these are intruders, let's go after them immediately. As we see in this chapter, it's immediately, oh, they're there, but we don't have time for you right now. We gotta go after and stop them from actually attacking you guys. So... Very interesting there. It seems that the the mink that was wearing Nami's clothes was actually named Wanda. There was still no like explanation as to why she was wearing Nami's clothes. I mean, a lot of people thought that was Nami herself, but troll. But uh, more to the point, 
it seems as if something is something is going like very wrong within the uh, island of Zo, especially around the villages where we notice that there's it's been ravaged and taken down in a lot of other places, claw marks everywhere. And it seems that the main villain for this arc is going his name is Jack. So we already we seem to have a name of who we're gonna be seeing, like who who we're gonna be seeing go up against in this arc. So very interesting there. We also seem to get a little bit more information on Beppo, the navigator on Law's crew. It turns out Beppo is actually part of the Mink tribe, but he actually left here. He actually left their island from like a young age, so he doesn't really have much memories of it. So, nice expedition there, because I believe there was a lot of rumors stating that Beppo was actually a man, but Law had transferred like either the heart or mind of a man into like a polar bear's body. Like, a lot of people speculated on this here, so... For all those theories out there, apparently with this chapter, that theory has been officially debunked as like Beppo was actually born that way. He's part of the mink tribe, so he would be a polar bear mink, I believe. So immediately we're going to cut back to on Luffy's end where he's at the whale tree and he seems to be going at it with the guardians, typical Luffy as always. And it seems that this electro ability that seems to be like a common trait within the uh, mink tribe and nobody like we don't really seem to know why if it could potentially be a new bizarre form of hockey i mean a lot of speculations out there as to like how or why the tribe seems to be having this type of ability here obviously the dude tries it against luffy and it's to like obviously no avail for obvious reasons because he's rubber but they don't really seem to catch on to that very well and in the island, we also see Bep. We get to actually see Beppo and the rest of Law's crew within this chapter. We finally see them again after so long. Uh, apparently, Beppo is actually the assistant guardian. So, very interesting to see. And it would also explain on why he has a lot of bandages and wounds. Because apparently, it could be potentially that they were fighting this Jack character. Or at least his associates and trying to protect the townspeople. So... Obviously, a lot of things are happening within this chapter here. Very interesting things. Really want to see some more expositions onto what exactly is going on here. At the end of the chapter, though, we do see that Wanda, the dog mink, is going to take Luffy to the rest of his crewmates. So, next chapter, we're finally going to be seeing Sanji and the others. However, the expression on her face looks as if that we might not see them as them. Maybe, like, as corpses, though, I mean, come on, the the rest of the straw hats are dying no no it's not gonna happen even zoro said himself that curly brow aka sanji is not definitely not gonna let that happen like nami N no no he he's not gonna let anything happen to nami can't say much for the other two though but uh yeah it's a very interesting chapter here we got a lot of exposition we finally get to meet up with uh lost crew so hopefully next chapter we get to meet up with the rest of luffy's crew here a lot of info has been you know shared as has been revealed and whatnot i'm still waiting to see whether or not we'll see a pony glyph in this arc because within this chapter we already see that uh, robin was going around already look like you know being an archaeologist really examining the place for what it is here so what do you what do you think so far about this chapter here flamehawk i definitely see some senses of skypea being added in Oh, definitely. A lot of people say that this was like the whole... It was like another reboot of the Skypea arc. Because if you look back, the Dressrosa arc was kind of like a reboot of the uh, Crocodile arc. The Alabasta arc. So, it definitely kind of seems like kind of a reboot in a way. What, what do you think? I hope this trend doesn't continue. Because that makes the rest of the series kind of like kind of following a formula. And if we can get the predictability going down, I'm not sure if the series will be as good as it used to be well it's funny that you say that because i think this i think because there was a picture i believe a few people went into the picture of oda's like you know basically where he makes the magic whatnot and he seemed to have like separate folders or books of when he's working on separate arcs here so i don't according to that there seems to be one seems to be a picture of a dragon another book had a picture of like the wano country so i don't think we'll be following the formula i think it was merely dress rosa and the zoe that followed like similar formats but as we could see though while they might be similar they're still trying to like keep different in their own areas here so your thoughts i'm definitely relieved to hear that because one piece is one of the best animes 
in terms of many Americans' opinions, but if they try to make it too predictable, they might wind up shooting themselves in the foot right there. Yeah, definitely here. I mean, One Piece has always prided itself with that level of unpredictability here, because, I mean, if we cut back to the Marine Ford War, everybody thought, even I thought, that Ace was probably going to live. They were all going to save Ace, because, I mean, we thought they went through all this effort. There's no way Ace is going to, boom. Nope. Yeah, nope. Not for you. <laughs> I, I was disappointed. I mean, it helped build the story, and another interesting fact, now we're on the subject of Marine Ford, Oda has gone on record to say that Marine Ford War was just kind of like a thing to him. Like, he didn't expect Marine Ford War to be a big deal. I, I believe there's been further, further news that how the final war in One Piece is going to make Marine Ford look like a joke. So, w what do you think on that? I'm not really going to read too much into it. I'm just going to leave it as I want to see the series episode by episode, chapter by chapter, and see how it progresses through the rest of its run. Yes, but I mean, though, I mean, he's gonna make Marine Ford War look like a joke. I mean, huh. but I mean, that's all. But I mean, uh, let's. Is that all we have for today, uh, Flame Off? No, that is not. We're gonna be going into kind of a rapid fire mode, where we're gonna be shooting out things at rapid sessions and going off stuff that we don't really want to dig into by that much. Halo 5 was released this week on Tuesday, and the audience, from what I believe, are saying that the campaign is kind of a joke with the AI not being too intelligent and the main villain not being that great. That's kind of a letdown, but Halo has never really been the greatest campaign. What makes it great is the multiplayer. The online Xbox Live multiplayer, and from what people have been saying about it online and different people, when I ask them, they have been saying it is pretty nice. So that's, that's pretty nice to hear that Halo 5, though it's kind of different in a sense due to the company and whatever, it's still somewhat the same Halo in a sense. Well, Toei announced that there's going to be a new Kamen Rider film, which is basically going to be a crossover between the new Kamen Rider Ghost and the uh, previous one, Kamen Rider Drive. The film is going to be set to open by December 12th, and it's also and Toei Animation has announced this. I mean, personally, I find it odd how Toei Animation can do good Kamen Rider films, but animes. A, the anime region usually lacks. Never quite understood that. I'm unfortunately gotta catch up on this because I believe I'm on the verge of finishing Common Rider Gaim, and I mean the fruit one, which lovely series as always. I've always been a fan of the Common Rider series, especially since how I mean, if you like Power Rangers, then I mean you're pretty much gonna love Sentai Rangers and Common Riders. I mean the only difference is. Kamen Rider, there's no giant mecha robot battle, but, uh, yeah, that's it. That's going to be the new Kamen Rider, that's going to be the new Kamen Rider film. There's going to be Kamen Rider crossover between Kamen Rider Ghost and Drive, and the film's going to be set to open on December 12th, so literally right around the corner after this month. And you? Some interesting news that is kind of new. It seems that the fifth Indiana Jones movie, if there is one, won't recast the title character. I don't know what's going on. Um, Frank Marshall, the producer, says that there are a lot of rumors. We haven't even sat down to talk about Indy yet. At some point, we'll sit down, but there's a bunch of people who could probably take the baton. We're not doing the Bond thing where we're going to call somebody else Indiana Jones. We have to figure this out. So... That sucks for you, Mr. Pratt. So Chris Pratt isn't going to be Indiana Jones. He might be in the film, but he might not be called Indiana Jones. Can we go with Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> um, probably not. Okay, now back to, um, more to the rapid fire here. Uh, Funimation is going to be streaming the live-action prison school drama, which was created by a director who's famous for well pornographic films take that for what you will considering the series of um prison school what it is it's uh, it's been announced on monday that they're going to be doing this there's so far there's been with the uh, first two episodes they're going to be on november 3rd so that's literally going to be on tuesday that's that's going to be nice to watch i personally may not be watching this at all because uh, as far as i'm concerned the anime is enough 
The anime is enough, and it, and for those of you who haven't watched it, I recommend you watch it. It's a very comical series. However, I will warn you, it has it's very big on innuendos and toilet humor. So if that's not for you, you may want to take a pass. But if that is for you, then by Jove, you should watch a series. Ah, uh, and Flamehawk. Constantine is back. Dot dot dot. Only in the new Arrow episode coming out next week. <laughs> So, fans of the Constantine series, you still have to wait for him to get the series back. Now, do you want to talk about Sherlock? Oh, yes. Sherlock. Sherlock the Abominable Bride. That film is going to be coming out in January 1st, 2016. That is going to be a... I believe it's going to be a Christmas special type of episode or a New Year's special, technically. Uh, if you want to go see the trailer, feel free to go check out on our Twitter page. So it's very interesting. It seems to have uh, the for basically it seems to have the similar formula as before, except they try to bring it down more to the Victorian era. So basically, instead of saying the game is on like in the newer version, he's gonna stick with the more traditional the game is afoot. So yeah, very interesting series here. We also gonna see Mary is also we also gonna see Mary in this one. So nice to see very lovely we also might get to see the uh, baker street irregulars that's also going to be nice to see so yeah we're going to see typical sherlock in his uh well basically his eccentric attitudes and moods a lot of uh deductions going to be thrown around so uh yep the stage is set the curtain rises we are ready to begin well that's all we have for this week i hope you enjoyed it and remember to catch us next week however remember to catch us on twitter at Meets West, and also our Tumblr, which you can find on our webpage, nerdviataku.com, and you can catch out our Toonami previews, which is going to be doing a Acme Got Kill marathon this week, as well as our Any Way You Want It, featuring animes like One Punch Man, A War and No Seraph, and Tokyo Ghoul Rude. And Beautiful Bones. Tokyo Ghoul Rude, how I might add, is my co-host's favorite anime in existence. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! No, it's not! I'm not ranting! I'm not gonna rant! Oh, it's not! Route 8 needs to die! Well, that's it. Well, that's it for right now. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stay classy. I hate those clowns. Hey, this is Flamehawk. I hope you enjoyed our weekly East Meets West podcast. Be sure to catch us every week on Thursdays at 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I run the American side of things, covering Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and much, much more. And as always, I run the otaku and Japanese side of things, from Shonen Jump into other interesting anime news. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Your contribution is always appreciated. And remember, folks, stay classy. See ya!